how to write the concluding part of the background of the study. Since we have already completed the body of the background of the study in the previous lesson, we may now write the concluding paragraph, which is the tail of the cat. This is important because one of the rules of thumb in writing is that we always put a close to what we have started. It is important to note that the conclusion of the background of the study is just a rehashing of the research gap and main goal of the study stated in the introductory paragraph, but framed differently. The purpose of this is just to emphasize, after presenting the justifications, what the study aims to attain and why it wants to do it. The conclusion, therefore, will look like this. Given the above discussion, it is evident that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety. And as we can see, mathematical anxiety can negatively affect not just the academic achievement of the students, but also their future career plans and total well-being. Again, it is for this reason that the researcher attempts to determine the lived experiences of those junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing a mathematical anxiety. Now, if we combine all that we have written from the very beginning, the entire background of the study would now read. Mathematical anxiety refers to the individual's unpleasant emotional mood responses when confronted with a mathematical situation. Lou specifically identifies some of the manifestations of this type of anxiety, which include, but not limited to, depression, helplessness, nervousness, and fearfulness in doing mathematical and numerical tasks. If left to rule unchecked, as Shapiro claims, this problem will expand and create a total avoidance pattern on the part of the students, which can be expressed most visibly in the form of cutting classes and habitual absenteeism. As we can see, this will negatively affect the performance of students in mathematics. In fact, the study conducted by Luttenberger and Wimmer revealed that the outcomes of mathematical anxiety do not only negatively affect the student's performance in math-related situations, but also their future career as professionals. Without a doubt, therefore, mathematical anxiety is a recurring problem for many individuals which will negatively affect the academic success and future career of the student. Hence, it is precisely in this context that the researcher aims to determine the lived experiences of those students with mathematical anxiety. In particular, this proposed thesis aims to determine the lived experiences of the junior high school students in New Zealand and identify the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics. The researcher argues that there is a need to determine the lived experiences of these students with mathematical anxiety because knowing and understanding the difficulties and challenges that they have encountered will put the researcher in the best position to offer some alternatives to the problem. Indeed, it is only when we have performed some kind of a diagnosis that we can offer practicable solutions to the problem. And in the case of the junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety, determining their lived experiences as well as identifying the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics is the very first step in addressing the problem. According to records and based on the researchers' first-hand experience with students in some junior high schools in New Zealand, indeed, there are students who lost interest in mathematics. For one, while checking the daily attendance and monitoring of the students, it was observed that some of them are not always attending classes in mathematics, but are regularly attending the rest of the required subjects. As a matter of fact, this phenomenon is also observed in the work of Estonanto. In his study titled, Impact of Math Anxiety on Academic Performance in Pre-Calculus of Senior High School, Estonanto found out that, in Terralia, Students with mathematical anxiety have the tendency to intentionally prioritize other subjects and commit habitual tardiness and absences. With this initial knowledge in mind, the researcher conducted initial interviews with some of these students. 
the researcher learned that one student did not regularly attend his math subject because he believed that he is not good in math and, no matter how he listens to the topic, he will not learn. Another student also mentioned that she was influenced by her friend's perception that mathematics is hard, hence she avoids the subject. Indeed, these are concrete proofs that there are some junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. As already hinted, disinterest or the loss of interest in mathematics is one of the manifestations of a mathematical anxiety. To validate the information gathered from the initial interviews and observations, the researcher conducted another round of interviews and observation with other junior high school students in New Zealand. On the one hand, the researcher found out that during mathematics time, some students felt uneasy. In fact, they showed a feeling of being tensed or anxious while working with numbers and mathematical problems. Some were even afraid to sit in front, while some students at the back were secretly playing with their mobile phones. These students also show remarkable apprehension during board works like trembling hands, nervous laughter, and the like. As Finlayson corroborates, emotional symptoms of mathematical anxiety involve feeling of helplessness, lack of confidence, and being nervous for being put on the spot. It must be noted that these occasionally extreme emotional reactions are not triggered by provocative procedures. As a matter of fact, there are no personally sensitive questions or intentional manipulations of stress. The teacher simply asked a very simple question, like identifying the parts of a circle. Certainly, this observation also conforms with the study of Ashcraft, when he mentions that students with mathematical anxiety show a negative attitude towards math and hold self-perceptions about their mathematical abilities. On the other hand, when the class had their other subjects, the students show a feeling of excitement. They even hurried to seat in front and attentively participating in the class discussion without hesitation and without the feeling of being tensed or anxious. For sure, this is another concrete proof that there are junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. The researcher further verified if the problem is also happening in other sections and whether other mathematics teachers experience the same observation that the researcher had. This validation or verification is important in establishing credibility of the claim and ensuring reliability and validity of the assertion. In this regard, the researcher attempted to open up the issue of math anxiety during the departmentalized learning action cell, a group discussion of educators per quarter with the objective of teaching strategies to develop critical thinking of students. During the session, one teacher corroborates the researcher's observation that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. The teacher pointed out that truly, there were students who showed no extra effort in mathematics class, in addition to the fact that some students really avoided the subject. In addition, Another math teacher expressed her frustrations about these students who have mathematical anxiety. She quipped, How can a teacher develop the critical thinking skills or ability of the students if, in the first place, these students show avoidance and disinterest in the subject? Given the above discussion, it is evident that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety. And as we can see, mathematical anxiety can negatively affect not just the academic achievement of the students, but also their future career plans and total well-being. Again, it is for this reason that the researcher attempts to determine the lived experiences of those junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing a mathematical anxiety. Now, if we analyze the background of the study that we have just completed, we can observe that, in addition to the important elements that it should contain, it also addressed other important elements that readers or thesis committee members expect from it. On the one hand, 
it provides the researcher with a clear direction in the conduct of the study. As we can see, the background of the study that we have just completed enables us to move in the right direction with a strong focus as it has set clear goals and reasons why we want to do it. Indeed, we now exactly know what to do next and how to write the rest of the research paper or thesis. On the other hand, most researchers start their research with scattered ideas and usually get stuck with how to proceed further. But with a well-written background of the study, just as the one presented here, we have decluttered and organized our thoughts. We have also become aware of what have and have not been done in our area of study, as well as what we can significantly contribute in the already existing body of knowledge in this area of study. Please note, however, as already mentioned previously, that the model we are presenting here is only one of the many models available in textbooks and other sources. You are, of course, free to choose your own style of writing the background of the study. You may also consult your thesis supervisor for some guidance on how to attack the writing of your background of the study. Lastly, as you may already know, Universities around the world have their own thesis formats. Hence, you should follow your university's rules on the format and style in writing your research or thesis. What is important is that, with the lessons that you learned in this course, you can now easily write the introductory part of your thesis, such as the background of the study.